Go. Okay. Um. So I was working on this earlier. Everything was working fine. Then, like ten minutes ago, nothing was working. <laughs> so hopefully you can bear with it. Um. If you want, here's the. If you want a QR code, that's a link to the. Not the map. I'm using. Literally just linking to this address, but anyway. Wait, it's a QR code that links to itself? Yeah. So. Oh, <laughs> oh, nice. I just figured that's easiest way. Right? Because I'm not going to tell you to type that in or whatever. Anyway. So. I figured I'd talk about, since he said, I, I run the Smash Night, and um, I do a lot of things to make my life easier as an event organizer, and a lot of it has to do with uh, hacking the Wii or hacking the game or making it do stuff that it wasn't originally supposed to do. So. Uh, okay. okay, so you'll see, uh, I'm going to go over basic tools, some basics. I'm going to read and modify Can you add memory. Well? Um, For people in the back. Let's see. Whoa. You asked. That's fair. You can use the drop down screen, but. Is that good? This is not fine. Yeah, they can read. Okay. It's tools, basics, we're going to read, modify some memory code. We're going to modify some game code. Hopefully, we're going to demo that will probably fail. <coughs> and talk about some uses, and I'll have some links for some additional cool reading. So, one of the first tools, uh, uh, I should just keep this up. So, obviously, stuff you'll need is a Wii, because that's the stuff we're going to change. A USB gecko. So um, you can see right here, I'll link to that. Here's a little description about it. But basically, it's a device. Some very smart people figured out that the memory card port of the Wii is actually just a serial interface to the Wii. And so they basically just hooked up uh, this thing to interface with that serial port. And if you want, you can. Here's a memory card, you can just pass it around. It literally just plugs into the, the thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, so I invited Ammon over here. Uh, he goes by Callmaster in the Smash scene, and he's probably, uh, he's considered one of the best melee players in the world, and uh, one of the best Luigi's. Uh, in the game of Smash Brothers. So anyway, so this USB device lets us do a whole bunch of cool things with with the Wii that you'll see, hopefully. Uh, and uh, here's some other stuff. But if you don't have this, uh, some people created an emulator called Dolphin Emulator. And that actually lets you do a lot of things without the console itself. I'm going to try to show you uh, stuff using both the emulator and the console. Uh, so hopefully that will work out. Uh, some things that are good to know is like the basic number systems, decimal, binary, hexadecimal. Um, if you're like me, your brain will get fried after reading like game code and hex code and assembly after 10 minutes, so, but having familiarity will help you expedite uh, getting things done. Um, so basically, bit one zero byte, eight bits. So on the Power PC processor, which the Nintendo Wii and most Nintendo software runs, it's a 32 bit word, which means that most of the things that we're going to deal with are going to be 32 bits long. That's how big the registers are, and that's how big a lot of things that we'll be doing are. So the word is 32-bit. Good to know. 
Uh, and it's good to know the memory map. So basically, the starting address will be at 8000000. And it goes to, uh, basically, it goes to uh, 818000. Um, these are addresses to bytes within uh, the memory. So let's see if I can get something going right now. So I'm going to move this to the side. And now we're going to... So I already downloaded all the things that we need to know. We need. Uh, so one of the things is... I guess I should show you since... Uh, so if you get a dolphin... Uh, you can go to downloads up top, and I'll take you to this. You'll see these versions up here, stable versions. That's not what we're going to be dealing with. We're going to deal with the development versions. So I literally just downloaded the, the most recent one today, and it seems to work fine. Uh, but Why do you use the development version? Which is a very good question. So Numis asked, why do we use the development version? Uh, so. Basically, this is intended just to play Nintendo games on your computer. Uh, but in recent development versions, uh, there they have something called memory breakpoints, which lets you break. Uh, it has a built-in debugger, so you can break a certain lines of code, um, and that does not work in the stable versions. It only works with the most recent development versions. It'll um, make it a lot easier to work with. Yeah. So is that a feature of building here, or is it just yeah. because you can code? Well, the thing is, so before, uh, you actually had to compile your own version mm -hmm. uh, to enable that. But in the most recent development versions, they just uh, enabled that by default. Oh, okay. so, so the development versions are built with debugging enabled. With debugging enabled. Correct. The stable ones are. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we're using uh, the current version. And this just happened recently, these development versions. Uh, just a few months ago, you had to compile your own stuff like I was talking about. Super annoying. Didn't work half the time. Sometimes you had to go through old versions. But uh, these new versions work pretty good. Um, another thing you have to do, so Go into Dolphin. You have it, it, um, so if I just start, let me close Dolphin for you. If I just start Dolphin, that's all it is. It just lets you open games and play. But if you create a shortcut to it and then slip the D flag on it, right there, when you open it, you'll get all these. Like the stuff that we want to see, the debugging features that it has. So let me go ahead and start this up. Okay. Uh, also, a nifty thing that you can do with uh, Dolphin is set uh, save states. So I can just go to F2, and I already have something going right here. And so. Pause it. Uh, so right here in Dolphin, uh, I usually, so you can go to View, and you can open up several tabs. The code tab is always open. So this is the game code. You'll see nothing is shown right here, right now. But if you click Pause, this is the game code. You can literally just step through the code, and that's what's happening. Um, these are your registers. Uh, basically, the little bits of memory that the, the processor works with. Um, 
breakpoints, we're setting breakpoints in this memory. So let me bring this up. So I already have some memory addresses to look at, but uh, let's see. Well, actually, let me show you this. So that, that's Dolphin. You can see it's playing the game. You can see the memory. Um, now I'll show you the, the console version. So basically, this hooks into the USB gecko. Uh, right now, I'm just capturing what's on the screen. Uh, and then can you go to the screen? Uh, just start playing a game or something like that. Yeah, I can just beat that guy up. So this also has a memory viewer. This has a breakpoint. You can go to dis disassembly. You can even take a screenshot if you want to. Uh, so all sorts of things. Uh, so I will. Okay, this kind of right here. So update one. Let's see. Um, okay, yeah, so and this is the console version. It's called gecko.net. Um, so anyway, that's that. I'll go back to Dolphin now. So I actually forgot to show you something. So I'm going to say what that now. So once again, I'll start this up. I'm not going to go to the safe state because uh, I'm going to show you some stuff first. So basically, you guys can see this, right? Okay. I mean, usually the first thing you have when you have a game is you have a whole bunch of stuff that you need unlocked, right? So I have this address right here. So I go to the memory tab, and then I put in this address. And you can see this right here is all zeroed right now because uh, nothing's unlocked. So if we set that up. So F, once again, meaning like ones across the entire bit. <coughs> so if we set that, so you can see we set the, the memory right there. They're all Fs. So now, if everything's going according to plan, when we go back, we magically have all the characters. <laughs> okay. How did you go to edit code? Go to that one right there. That's a good question. So. Obviously, because I would add a lot of those zeros for a while, figured it out. <laughs> so, uh, like Pope said, how do you find these memory spots? And that goes to the next section. Okay, I'll wait. Um, I'm skipping ahead. Oh. <laughs> done, done, done. So now I'll, I'll demonstrate this section on the console version. So once again, this is uh, Ammon playing on the console. So what's very common to do is something called like a, a cheat search. It's pretty pretty common. So basically, what people do. So uh, so just start a new game. I actually um, set the set the stocks to ten, and then. Uh, and then go ahead and start again. So we're going to start with a very easy thing to find. So just pause it right now. So basically, what I'm going to uh, try to find is the stock count. How do we affect his stocks? So right now we set his stock to 10. So basically, right here, once again, remember the memory ranges. This is the entire memory range of 
where we need to search. It's actually a smaller subset of that, but this works fine. So we think we hit, it's a specific value, so we can call this, uh, I actually know this is a 8-bit thing. So we want to search for values in memory that equal 10. So a gotcha number one is remember that these are in hex. So I'm not searching for 10, I'm searching for 0a, right? 0a is 10. So now I'm going to run this search. It's going to search this entire memory range and give me every single uh, spot memory that has the value 0a in it. Okay? And you can see down at the bottom, I'm not sure if you can see it, yeah. there's this uh, little green bar. So you kind of have to wait until it finishes. A lot of memory. <laughs> yeah. But as you go through, so basically we're refining it. So right now we know the value is 10. OK, so now we have a whole bunch of memory uh, results. We have 96,921 results. Way too much to parse through. So MN, can you unpause and then kill yourself? Pause. OK, so now we know that whatever value that holds the stock should be value 9 now, correct? So now we're going to do uh, 0, 9, and refine. So now it's going to look through all the memory addresses that we found on the last search and see if anyone any of them are now 0, 9. So we're going to refine that. Once again, since it's not going through as many, it should go faster. The more we do this, the, f the more refined we get, uh, the faster and faster the search will go. So wait for this, wait for this. OK, nice. It inherited down to six results. That's actually pretty good. So uh, what we can do now, since this is a it's pretty small list of things to parse through, so I mean, you can just start playing the game. So now we can just go through these addresses. And so I'm just going to right click, click poke. It's going to bring out the address down here. And I can, uh, and so poke means to, uh, poke asked me this earlier, peeking is to read a memory address, poking is to write to a memory address. So now I'm just going to start going through these and uh, writing values to it. So I write A, and I hope that nothing breaks. I poke it, so nothing happened there. Poke, let's try 0A again. Nothing happened again. So I actually know that the stock count is this one. So we already tried that it didn't work. This one will work. So I poke. Now, does everyone see how his stock count is at 8 right now? Mm -hmm. So what stock count should we put it at? 72. So, uh, <laughs> what's 72 in hex? I don't know. <laughs> AD. <coughs> AD. It's not, but sure. It's OK, so we're going to poke that. Oh, that was probably too high. <laughs> so let's just try 204. Wow. Now he has four stocks. Okay. I can poke it at eight. Now he has eight stocks. Okay. Zero F. Zero F. Poke. Yeah, but let's pause okay. so you can get some food. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sweet. <laughs> if I poke at zero. He dies. Oh. <laughs> okay. I thought he was like one of the good players. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically how we search for things. Basically, we're refining things. But uh, I mean, the stock count is pretty nice because we're searching with exact values. Oftentimes, uh, it's not that easy. Uh, and so now I'm going to do a demonstration where. We try to look for uh, the percentage now. So I'll do this in Dolphin now, so you can see that you can do it in both. So basically, I have this 
Oh my gosh. Let's take this. Actually, let's just go to the safe state. Okay. So, right here, we can go through our. Uh, in Dolphin, the cheat feature is if you go to Options, Tools, Cheat Manager, and then you go to Cheat Search right over here. So it's basically the same thing. Uh, basically, we don't know what we're looking for right now. So I'm just going to hit New Scan, and it's just going to give us every single memory address. And so we'll try what we did before. So it's equal to zero. <laughs> And then we'll hit uh, new scan, and that and so this gives us every single count. It's much faster on the computer. Uh, that gives us zero, which is probably not a good thing to search for since the zero is a lot. Okay. Okay. So I'll wait for him to hit me. Hopefully. Okay. I'm at five now. So we'll try five. New scan. Oops, I did new scan, so next scan, 15 now, next scan, still too many, wait for him to hit me again, okay, 25 now, next scan, 5, 38, next scan, Nothing. So we can look at these things, and we can see that nothing's really looking like the value we want. And that's because the percentage, even though it only looks, even though the graphic is showing that it's a whole percentage, the game is actually storing it as a float. So there's actually a decimal point after it. And so that's another gotcha. Just because what you see the graphic is, is not necessarily how it's being stored internally. And so because we don't necessarily know the flow values, what we're going to do is do a fuzzy search. So instead of doing these equal amounts, basically we're just going to do, I don't know, new scan. And so now we're at zero now. OK. So now we know that it's greater than the previous value, right? So we do next scan. OK, let him hit me a couple times. OK, it's greater than again. Do this some more. Next scan. And as you can see, it's getting refined more and more right here, the count. And so once it gets to a small enough amount, it's just going to show us all these values. OK? So now we're at 0. So then we're going to be at less than. So we're going to do next scan. Previous result. OK. Now we're greater than. OK. And so then it's kind of good to look through these values. So we're at 19%. So uh, also we see that a bunch of these things are changing. So what we'll just do is set it to equal. We know that it's still equal to the last value. So we're just going to hit equal a bunch of times and hit next scan. So now we're at 28. These are the things that haven't been changing. Uh, this should give us a good amount to just look through. And you can see right here. Uh, Let's see, where am I at now? 29. So did any of these change to like 2.9 or something? And obviously, because I've probably messed up, nothing shows up. Uh, but basically, that's how you do a fuzzy search, right? You say, oh, it's greater than the last value, or it's less than the last value. Uh, you try to prune results, saying, it's like, OK, it's not changing, so we just say equal to. Uh, and so I already have the memory address that we need. So we don't actually we don't have to sit through that again. Uh, so the memory address is actually right here. 
And so you can see the flow value is 29.76. And then with Dolphin, you have to double click it, and you can see it's 38.74, which is 38 right there. So you can see uh, that that's how you would find like a flow value. So I don't know. Let's create like a cheat. And so basically, what we want to do is make it so that this memory address right here is always zero. That means if I get hit, I don't take any percent. So what we can do that, what we can do is that that's called a basic O4 code because what you're going to do is that you're going to take this memory address right here, 80C6D190, append to 80 because uh, as you saw the memory map, everything's either 80 or 81. And then what you can do <coughs> is go back to Key Manager. I can actually create a new code. I'll call this player one uh, zero. Uh, and so I'm going to type this in. I'm going to put an O4 in front of it. And what O4 means is that it's going to write to that address, to the A0 and the rest of the C6D1. Now I'll put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Once again, a word is 32 bits. I'll save that. Uh, and apply that. Can't remember if we have to restart it to it. So let's see if this works or not. Yeah, so do you see how uh, basically when Bowser hits me, you still see percent go up because it's calculating and updating the graphic, but you can see that it always goes back to zero. Uh, so do you see how like it's like going down? So, so you're pretty much invincible at that point. Right. And so you can, and we can even read it, read the memory that it's constantly at zero, right here. It never changes from zero. And even though the graphic is updating because it goes through other things that we could probably change if we really wanted to, but and this is good enough for the demo. Like, he doesn't get any percentage. So I didn't follow why you put 04 instead of 80. Is that just GameCube specific to its architecture? So, um, Basically, uh, basically, when you're writing like action replay codes or game, like remember, like back in the day, you have Game Sharks oh, and yeah, stuff like that. Genie. Yeah, they have they have their own code handler, and the O4 means write to this address, and uh, so it's just part of the cheat engine built into Dolphin then. Uh, and also built into three and all that stuff. Okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So uh, that's pretty cool, uh, but now let's. So now we can we see we can view and change memory. Now let's view and change the actual code of the game. So I'll show you right here. Once again, we found before the memory address for the stock. So right now I'm gonna go to this breakpoint tab. I'm gonna set a memory breakpoint right here, the plus MVP. I'm going to say anytime something writes to this address, in other words, changes the stock, I want you to break the game. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Uh, you can see right here. So anytime this changes, we're going to break. So hopefully, once this guy dies, OK. Now you see this play button turn into a pause, or the pause button turn into play, because the game is physically frozen. It stopped at the exact code uh, after that memory address uh, was written to. Huh. And you can see right here, if I still have my old code here. So I'll show you play right now. I'm just going to press play right now. So I accidentally left the code. For my demo, you can see when I die, 
The stack is actually going up. <laughs> That's what I was going to show you how to do it. But so basically, okay, let's do this again. Set the breakpoint. <coughs> it paused. So you can see right here, it paused at this green line right here. And you can see right above it is this line that says Addy R0 R3 1. What that says in Assembler is add immediately uh, whatever's in register 3, add 1 to it, and then store in R0. Okay? So you can do is what's called insert knob. Knob means no operation. You'll see that a lot when you're you know, messing with game code. Because usually you want to do stuff, and it's like, oh, I don't, I don't want to do it, so I'm going to knop it. So now, now that we knop that code, let's push play. Now, whenever I lose a stock, instead of subtracting one from that register, it's just not going to run that line. Oh, sorry. I'm going to clear this breakpoint so it doesn't keep on breaking there. So now, even though I kill myself, it stays at 15. Because now we change that game code to not do anything. OK? Die again, still at 15, because we knocked that code. OK? And double software, <coughs> which is fine, because we're done with that. Uh, lots of times, things will crash. It happens. Um, I'll show you how to do it here as well. So we'll set a breakpoint right here. We'll set it. And then, do you want to just kill yourself, Norman? Yes. Yeah. OK, so now uh, you can see, even on the console, uh, it's physically broken. We can go to the disassembler. We can see here, we can go above. And we can see the actual code, which is supposed to be subtract, R0, R3. <coughs> and then the cool thing about this is that it has a built-in assembler. So you can actually just add your code here and then click assemble. So you can see this line right here where it says subtract one. We're going to change it to add one. So we'll assemble that. Now it's just going to put that in its place. So now we're going to run the game again. So now when you kill yourself, it should do, you can see that his stock went up. Okay. Completely useless code, but shows you that you know we can do pretty, pretty cool stuff with the game code. Uh, he is one of the best. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty insane. I'm not gonna. He lies. Thanks to John. Yeah. But I wouldn't turn away. <laughs> so. This is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> now they know. <laughs> so uh, I guess it's a good time to go over a little bit of assembly. Um, yeah. So this is power PC assembly, right? Yes. So assembly code is very is specific to the processor. And this is power PC assembly, which is uh, the processor that uh, most Nintendo products use. So uh, basically, I like to think of it as uh, most often times you can see this code right here, LBZ R3 142 blah 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 blah. So basically, I like to think of it as a language. You know how we have like subject, what is it in English? Subject, verb, object, right? That's how we form sentences. Uh, I do this, subject, verb, object. In PowerPC assembly, it's verb, object, subject. So verb, this is the instruction. This is the instruction that the processor is going to do. Object, what are we going to do it to? We're going to do it to this register. And the subject, and we're going to do it from this register, right? So let's go back to this. Uh, let's go to this subtract code, right? So what this says is subtract immediate. That's what this uh, instruction code stands for. It's going to subtract 32096 from whatever's in R13 and then store it into R5. Uh, 
Likewise, this subject, uh, the verb is to subtract, the object is to put it into R3, and the subject is also R3, but we're going to subtract 1, 2, 7, 0, 4 for that. No. Uh, does that kind of make sense? The verb, object, subject thing? Yeah? Yep. Okay. And basically, with assembly, I feel like you can group instructions into about like five different categories. You have integer instructions, which is like your math-based instructions, like this, subtract. Uh, they'll have an, also have an add, they also have a divide, they'll also have a multiply. Uh, those are your like your integer instructions. Then you'll have like floating point instructions, which deals with floating point numbers. Then you have load and store instructions, which are very fun. So those are these uh, instructions that start with L and S. So basically, uh, what was that that we just did? Uh, I, just, I can't remember. Anyway, so basically, L means load, which means, remember the memory that we were looking at? It loads, or basically transfers something from that memory space into a register. Okay? And the W stands for word, so 32-bit. You can get uh, H's for like, uh, you know, for 16 bits and stuff like that. But basically they're instructions to transfer memory from that memory space we were looking and editing before and putting it into the register for the processor to manipulate. Okay? Store goes the opposite way. Basically, we're taking something from a register and putting it into a mem back into the memory space that we're looking at. Does that make sense? Uh, and then you have branch and flow instructions. So let me open up Dolphin again. So something nice with Dolphin that you don't get with the console version is that you can actually load. Uh, so if we go here, if you guys, oh yeah, we have to load a game. Okay. Up here, pause it. Oh, got a controller. And we have, let's see. Okay. Um, so we have our code here, which once again only shows up when you click pause. But looking at all this code is, I mean, like it's a lot of code to look through, right? So something you can do is called generate symbol map. And what that basically does, it splits this up into kind of like functions. Why is this computer being set on right now? I don't know. Okay. So you can see basically all these different all these different colors are different functions, so to speak. And you'll see most of these end with a BLR. That stands for branch link register. So you'll see here in the register. These are all the registers in PowerPC processor. One of them is called the link register. Because how this usually goes, so let me step through this code. I'm going to step through this code. So basically, whatever's in the link register, after this, so right here, the link register is 8080B84. Once we hit this blank, uh, the branch link register, it'll go back to that address. And that's basically how it goes to different parts of the memory. Um, and so th those are the, the branch and flow control instructions of the PowerPC processor. So once again, that's integer instructions, floating point instructions, load and store instructions, and branch and flow control instructions. And then there's also various instructions that are like, like do weird things that you're not have to worry about. So, uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? 
Yes. Does Harp, or does the Nintendo still use Harp, do you think? Yes. Yep. So, uh, so the person who first hacked <coughs> the, the Wii U, um, so you, you guys saw the, the, the gecko that we had, right, that we're using to control the console. What they literally did is busted open a Wii U and soldered the different points from that USB gecko to different points in the Wii U, and that's how they were able to dump uh, various things from the Wii U and to, to hack it. And then you can basically use all these same tools uh, on the Wii U uh, as well. So you can use this. Uh, uh, they have a modified version called TCB Gecko, which basically runs just over TCP. Uh, and you can control your Wii U the same way you can do this. Uh, Anybody got a switch yet? <laughs> yeah, is there is there a gecko for the new switch? Uh, no. I mean, it's, it's USB, Definitely so not. you might have to crack it open. And, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're probably gonna whoever's <coughs> gonna crack it first is probably gonna physically crack it open. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so as for like how emulators were made, did things like the Gecko actually help with that? Because people who were working on emulators could. Now this emulator literally started as they just translated every single Power PC function into like an Intel uh, like Pentium function. Okay. We literally just went from each line and <laughs> translated really one cool. to one. Yeah. I thought Dolphin started back with GameCube. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's just transferring PowerPC instructions to like x86, x64 instructions, yeah. stuff like that. But I'm sure not all of it works, right? right yeah, like and like obviously over time they refined it. I think. Yeah, they they you know cached some things to make it go faster. They did set various things to speed it up. To now they can kind of do it pretty fast. Although you see that I'm running this on my desktop because it does require a lot of processing power. So the, your graphics card doesn't matter, but when you run these emulators, your CPU matters a lot. And so this is running an i7. If I try to run this on my laptop, it'd probably die. So having a powerful uh, processor is very important. So now that we know a little bit of the uh, like basically reading and writing memory code, and memory. I usually find it helpful to read other people's uh, assembly codes. And you can see right here is that this is basically just some assembly code that was injected into the game to uh, spit out random functions. And so I think uh, an important thing here is this instruction right here. So you can see. You can't combine both an instruction and a memory address into one memory address. Does that make sense? Because the memory address is already 32 bits. The instruction is 32 bits. So you can't say, go to this address and have room all in 32 bits. So what you have to do, and this is another gotcha, is that you grab one part, you load it into a register, and you shift it all the way to the left. So you can see right here, load, e load immediate shift. So we're going to load 8016 into R3. And then we're going to shift it 16 bits left. That's what uh, LIS is, load immediate shift. So now R3 is 8016000. Okay? Then to run uh, a function, you do an OR command. So basically, you OR immediate R3. So R3, once again, is 8016. And you OR it with B558. Are you guys familiar with AND, OR, and all that stuff? So basically, if you OR it, then you finally get the full memory address into a register. And once you get a full memory in a register, then you can actually go to it. So 
that's a little weird quirk you have to deal with when you're running assembly with the RP2 processor and the 32 bit memory addresses. So, um, So basically now I just want to talk about some pieces that we have for it. So uh, there's this very famous case right here of this guy, HTL on man launch person HTML. So basically this story is about someone modified their Wii uh, to basically when they plugged into player four, the player four port in their Wii, the character Pikachu got some slight buffs, uh, <laughs> and so basically this random person came to the scene and started winning. He started beating everyone, and he started winning with a character called Pichu, which is considered one of the worst characters in the game. And everyone's like going crazy. What's going on? And they finally found out that he modified the code so that when he plugs into player four, like things get edited in the game code like we saw. And it's but it's altered ever so slightly so that you don't immediately think it's off, but it actually is. And so they actually did, you know, the, the MD5 uh, like the code on this thing. And they're like, it's completely off. And then they analyze it and they're like, Okay, yeah, and they saw all the buffs and went off. <laughs> and so it's, what you can do with that is that you can actually cheat, and it's happened before. <coughs> I, I wouldn't recommend it. But. How did he get the code in there? Yeah. Did he do it on like, his own cartridge, or yeah, was it so, his own Wii that he modified? There, there's various ways to... Uh, there's various injection points into the code. And I'll show you one. Can we start the other week? Um, so one of them is obviously just using a USB loader. Usually USB loaders let you add in codes. And so if he does that prior to the turn and starting, before anyone sees, then... So does he do I'm that sorry. to the cartridge? So was it his controller, or his, his Wii, or the cartridge? Well, basically, everyone kind of uses uh, memory modifications these days. Uh, mm -hmm. And the most common way is called the memory card exploit, which basically, I mean, you can see that we're writing things from the memory card. Mm -hmm. If you actually put some like, data in a specific format in the memory card, uh, it'll actually buffer overflow and you can inject your code into nice. it. Um, and so I'll show you. Uh, Emma, did you get that started? Yes, it's um, the way it started. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and start and come back. So this is just a USB loader. So once again, you can uh, press A, so press B. So you can say you can see you can turn on sheets right here in this loader, and basically you just add a file right next to the file of the code that I showed you earlier, like the 04 stuff, and it'll just load it with the game. But we'll keep sheets off, press B, and then start the game. So that's that's one entry point to. Uh, uh, load in your custom code. So uh, in this scenario, he was he using like a memory card, or how was he? Yeah. So right now you can see there's a memory card up here on top of the gecko, mm -hmm. which has a modification called 20xxte. So if you click start, so what this does. So if you go to reverse mode, so even though we turned on cheats off in the, the USB loader, if you get a name entry, so now you can see up top it says 20xx tournament edition because it injected code mm -hmm. through that memory exploit. Okay. And so, like, if you just stick in your memory card, no one's gonna be like, oh, it's a memory card, right? So, yeah, sure. um, like, also in brawl, like. Various games have different exploits. Like the stage loader in Super Smash Bros. Ball has the same thing. If you load up the stage loader and you put something in the memory card, it will run your custom code. So he basically stuff. took an image of uh, Super Smash Brothers 
and then took the modified the like tournament edition and then modified that further so that he could so that when when that code was injected it looked like it was normally just injecting the, the tournament code but it was also adding in his or how is it well i don't know that's he, he did that in a different scene so i don't know exactly how he chose to do it but there are various ways to so, put your code in yeah because then it's like oh no it's the tournament edition you can see yeah. it up at the top it's doing other stuff but exactly so obviously yeah that, that's one use is cheating and you know just being a jerk other things is like doing stuff like this, like 20XXTE. Uh, so just, uh, I don't even have this screen up. So you can have your screen. Uh, just play the match real quick. Uh, so one thing that uh, this game, uh, just go to versus uh, mode. Yeah. So, um, I'm just going to have him run through his code. Because the nifty feature about this 20XXTE uh, is uh, lots of PC games have replay functions. This game does not have a replay function. OK. And then just play yourself. Yeah. And so what the guy who created the t uh, 20XXTE mod did is add further, further remind uh, functions to the game. They're very, very useful, which is why everyone uses it. So now if he presses Z on the character select screen, he can go down and click play replay. And now you suddenly have a replay. This was not in the original game. This function was added because of hackers. And press A. Now you can see the hit boxes and the hurt boxes. Once again, uh, this was not in the original game. People found it. And people found a way to enable it. Uh, also, he's pressing R and L, which speeds it up and slows it down. Uh, all really cool features that the Mali Hacking community uh, added to aid in the scene. So there's lots of good things you can do with hacking besides cheating. Um, and I'll show you one thing that I do as uh, a TO. Um, and this might break, but uh, we're about to find out if it breaks or not. So basically, when you're running a tournament, someone has to sit there and update the score, right? Like, over. Otherwise, it doesn't get done. I think that's not leveraging human power very effectively, having someone sink down, staring at the game. If someone wins, update the score, so it updates on the screen. So I wrote this little thing to uh, Yay, it didn't crash. Well, that's what it was, it was crashing on the really, yeah. remember? Yeah. So I'm going to peek this. Uh, and so basically, I have the streaming controller function. And so. okay. Let's see if this works. Okay. So this is something similar to what we uh, okay, hold on. I got stuck again. So you, you have something that connects in with this machine that updates your scoreboard? Uh yeah, so basically uh, I wrote this little program so that I can uh, read and write memory from the memory. Mm -hmm. And I'm using that to uh, update my overlay that we use for our tournaments. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I'll get to show you that real quick. Uh, I mean, so you can see right here that there's a, there's a gameplay, and then there's a player, there's a second player, and you, you write down the scores, right? And hold on. 
for some reason this latest one is not working, so I'll update. Sorry, I just need to point it to the right files. So basically, I just I just create this. It's just a CSV file of uh, various memory addresses that uh, I found, and so if I click peak, it'll it'll spit out the memory values for me. You know, all the peaks. So I'll keep on updating this. So when you do tournament style, do you make everyone use your the box that you're connected to, or do you have multiple interfaces? Yeah, so we have a dedicated stream setup. So so you can see right here. If I I can change stuff like that. Uh, this player is playing that player. And I can click update. And you can see that the, the thing changes. Correct? Oh, that's cool. Right? Yeah. So uh, how many in handles? Yeah. And then so I can increase the score and all that stuff. Or it increases by itself, right? Yeah, so like that's how I that's how literally everyone besides us does it? And it's pretty stupid, right? Having someone just sit there updating. Get one, score, update, update. One, two, it's update. it's such a waste of someone's time. And so I wrote this and now. Um, so one thing is uh, when you watch streams, you don't know who's playing which character. So Ammon, do you wanna like select your character? Quick. So now it automatically changes his character. Mm. So do you want to just go around and switch to okay. the pages? Uh, so you can see, no matter what he chooses, I'm not doing anything. It's just going to auto update uh, the screen overlay. Obviously, there'll be a camera on him during the live stream. Uh, and also, just go to a game and then, like, match with the flag. Yeah. Go uh, Go ahead and uh, start a game. Just completely wreck some computer. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, you just kept this <laughs> uh, actually, So, about no. the wrecking part. <laughs> 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 it's too strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes you feel any better. I didn't know which one was you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it did. <laughs> So basically, when I'm running the tournament, I'm busy running away. So I don't have to be in front of the computer while this is happening. I'm just like going out, making sure matches are happening, making sure the next guy's going. Uh, and while they're playing, this thing will automatically update for me. And, uh, so do you have? How do you manage like all? So I imagine you have more than one system connected, right? Currently managing all of them together. Uh, so I don't manage all of them. I only manage the stream. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so there, just... there is a guy who's uh, using the USB decker to pass into an Arduino that has an, uh, an Ethernet shield on it to connect everything. I still don't feel the need. Uh, so you can see so the score updated. So it automatically incremented without me doing anything. And so that means that. What usually most teams have people do is have someone just sit there. We don't have to do because we just read the game and read directly. So that's how I use it. And so I hope you guys kind of got like a little glimpse of what you can do with all the tools that we use. Um, and that's basically all I prepared for you guys today. So. Thank you. Thank you.